recently one of my power query automation stopped working the reason someone went and changed a file name in this video let's understand how to use variables to fix such problems let's go step 1 open a new file and set up the file name and folder path in two cells the second step is select the file name cell and give it a name you can do it from the name box in the top left corner just select it and give it a name like file underscore name repeat that step for the folder path but give the name as folder underscore path so now you have got two names in your workbook one with the file name and another with the folder path next up select either one of these and go to the data ribbon and use the from table slash range option this will bring the file name into power query as a table now we just need the name we don't need the table so select on the very first cell that says the file name for example here it is december visitor log dot xlsx right click and drill down that's going to drill down to the value and just give you the file name we also need the folder name here to get the folder name just duplicate the file name query right click on the file name query and select the duplicate option and first up let's rename this query as folder underscore path and then go to the source step you will need to enable the formula bar in power query to do this next step so if you don't have this formula bar here go to the view ribbon and check the formula bar option so that it shows up while looking at the formula bar on the source step select the name that says file underscore name and replace it with the folder underscore path so that you will have the folder path you can go to the navigation step and you will see the folder path at the end of this step you should have two names both of the values are fetched into power query one having file name and another having folder path now that we have both variables inside power query let's build a connection that gets the data from this folder path and file name combination for this you can go back to excel and do all of the things again but as we are already here i'm going to just do it inside power query to bring new data set into power query in the queries panel area here right click anywhere and select new query and then point to file excel workbook keep in mind that this technique works even with text files xml pdf or whatever including sharepoint items so select excel workbook and point to one of the files for example i'm going to point to the same december visitor log again and import it select the table that you want to import in our case we wanted the visitor log information and click okay this is going to get you the data from that file now the problem with this query as you can guess is it is hard coded to the december visitor log so if and when my file name as well as folder path changes i won't be able to refresh my queries so now go to the source step and while looking at the formula bar you can see that it is hard coding the path to the physical location on my computer that has the folder path and file name all together i'm going to delete all of the items including the double quotes and now where it says file contents i'm just going to say folder underscore path ampersand file underscore name so we are now constructing the whole name of the file and folder using those two variables that we have set up hit enter at this stage most of you will get this firewall warning this is because power query doesn't like when you try to combine your own input variables with external data source to fix this problem you will need to go to file options and settings query options and select the privacy and change the privacy level to always ignore privacy level settings don't worry this is not going to create any harmful effects on your queries click okay and then refresh the preview now the query is fetching the data and if you go to the navigation step you should see the data from that table in the file at this point we are going to close and load now if you close and load you're going to load all three items we don't want to load the file name and folder path back just the visitor log alone so i'm going to use the close and load and the select the second option for now i'll just create connections for everything and then select a cell where i would like to see the extracted data and then right click on my visitor log and then say load to and select a table 
in the existing worksheet on my selected cell. When I click OK, I'll have my data extracted here neatly. Whenever I have new information, for example, from December visitor log, I would like to now fetch the January visitor log that is in this folder. So I'll copy the file name. To copy the file name, you can press F2 in Windows while selecting the file and then select the whole file name. Control C to copy. Go back here and place the file name. Likewise, to copy the folder path in the Explorer, just click on the address bar, copy the folder path and paste it here. Keep in mind that you do need to add the backslash at the end. Otherwise, this won't work. If you don't want to add backslash here, you can update the query settings and include that backslash as part of the connection. Now that both of these are updated, let's see the January data here. I'm going to right click on the query and refresh and boom, I'll have the January data listed here automatically. But what if you don't want to change the file names, you want to combine all of this data that is January data, December data, February data, all of the data I want to combine. Here is a video that talks about how to combine data from different files into one big data set using Power Query. Check out that video. I'll catch you there. Bye-bye.